Sometimes in our gardens, things look pretty good, like this nice pole bean plant beside of me, but sometimes we do run into a few challenges. And so we want to give you a few pictures and descriptions of some of the common diseases that you might run into with your tomatoes. Now we're making visual assessments on these, but I just want to go ahead and say that if you want to be completely sure, it's always best to get a definitive diagnosis from a laboratory, such as our UT Plant Diagnostics Lab. This is obviously not a, one of the most beautiful tomatoes that you've ever seen, but we want to show you this because it's something that you might see in your own home garden. Uh, this plant is showing indications of being infected by a tomato spotted wilt virus. Now this virus is actually transmitted by thrips, and so oftentimes in a greenhouse production environment, if there are some insects that aren't very well controlled, the, this could happen. And if you see this, you of course always want to confirm with a diagnostic uh, clinic such as our if it is confirmed then these are plants that you want to take out of your garden so that if you happen to have any thrips in the area in your garden they will not infect your other plants here's an example of a little bit of spider mite damage on one of our tomato plants you can see a little bit of those white dots sprinkled across the top sometimes we call that stippling on the back side of the leaf, they're pretty hard to see, but these tiny red things are spider mites. Over time, spider mite feeding that removes valuable sugars and photosynthates from the plant can kill whole leaves. One of the most common diseases that we'll see on our home garden tomatoes is called early blight, or alternaria. And when we get into midsummer and the tomatoes are beginning to bear, it's very common to see what some gardeners call firing. Oftentimes our lower leaves will be the first to be infected and as it moves up the plant we'll see it slowly infect individual leaves and then move up. Up close often what we'll see with alternaria is a center where infection begins and almost a target shape as it expands outward on the leaf. Throughout our trials here in the gardens we do see some differences in the infection level of early blight between our cultivars. That can be due to the fact that we have some cultivars, especially some of our beefsteaks, such as Mountain Merit right here in front of me, that have some resistance to early blight. It's not the type of resistance that will completely eliminate all infection, but it can keep our plants healthier through much of the growing season. There are several leaf diseases that can impact your tomato plants through the course of the season. One of them is septoria, and when we see smaller circles like this with kind of tan spots on the inside, it makes us think septoria. So this would be a good example of a likely septoria infection. One thing to keep in mind is that often when we have septoria, we may actually have early blight at the same time. So we may have a mix of leaf diseases there all on the same plant. This is an example of a leaf that could actually have both septoria and early blight on it. As you walk through your garden, you may sometimes see plants that are showing some signs of wilt. Now certainly there can be environmental reasons, like water, why we might see some wilting, but as we look at this plant, we actually see wilting really all up along uh, the entire plant. And a good thing to do if we see these types of symptoms is to begin to look down at the base of the plant and see if there are any indicators of disease. As you walk through your garden, you may sometimes see plants that are showing some signs of wilt. Now certainly there can be environmental reasons, like water, why we might see some wilting, but as we look at this plant, we actually see wilting really all up along uh, the entire plant. And a good thing to do if we see these types of symptoms is to begin to look down at the base of the plant and see if there are any indicators of disease. Now there are certainly several diseases that can cause wilting. And it's one key thing to look for that we can see on this plant is a little bit of this white fungal growth, which is an indicator that there might be southern blight here, which is a disease that is challenging to control because it infects so many different species and it will take a very long rotation to deal with. <laughs> 